All right, case 12. Okay, dermal process. Um, looks like a papule here <clears throat> and has a suggestion of a cholera on one side. But within the dermis, we have a more cellular um, nodule here that has scattered vessels. Um, we're already starting to get a little bit of a suggestion of some hobnailing. Yeah, and something like that channel there, we got some hobnails. But here, yeah, it's hard to tell, like, it's like a solid nodule, it looks like at first glance, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then starting to look at the cell types here, too. Um, so there are definitely red cells, but there are EOs scattered. Yeah, good. It's hard on this scan to see, but uh, lots of red cells, but also lots of EOs. Anytime there's a bunch of red cells, it makes it harder to look for eosinophils. I think because they have a similar color from low power. Up close, they look different. You can see red cells are homogenous kind of texture and EOs, even on this poor quality scan, they have granules, right? So, but from low power, it makes it hard to spot them because you keep thinking, oh, is it an eosinophil? No, it's just a red cell. So at least, if, I don't know if you guys struggle with it, but I do, um, and I've been doing this for a while. So, and look, what looked like a solid nodule, this is a trick. If we did a vasco stain here, you'd see there's actually lots of little channels but the endothelial cells are so plump that they kind of squish and fill up the channel and make it hard to see the lumen um but you can see here though where some of them are opening up and there's actually a vascular channel lined by very plump almost epithelioid looking cells so what do you think this is then yeah ALAG. yeah angio lymphoid hyperplasia with eosinophilia or alag or the other name for it is epithelioid hemangioma because of the epithelioid uh, nature of the cells. And this may be, a, a, there may be several different things get, that get lumped under this term. The WHO soft tissue book has, has recommended to not use the term ALHE, but because I do derm path, I still use it. And I put um, epithelial hemangioma with ALHE parentheses or vice versa. Uh, but there probably are some things in the skin that get labeled ALHE that are actually like reactive processes, like a bug bite with exuberant vessel proliferation or other things like that. But then there are some that are probably true neoplasms. Um, in the soft tissue or deeper down, I think most of the things are actually neoplastic, which is why in soft tissue, they tend to call them epithelioid hemangioma. But I like that name because they do have really epithelioid cells. They tend to have lobules like this. The, sometimes the vascular channels look completely like closed off by the cells to the, so much to the point that they can look like nests of epithelioid cells. But again, with immunostains, what looks like a solid busy nodule here is actually quite well, if you do like a CD31, uh, and uh, maybe an act in here, you'll see that there's actual well-formed channels and then there's pericytes and myofibroblasts in the background surrounding those. And you can see there, there's much more organization uh, to what looks like kind of solid cellular madness here. And then finding the lymphocytes and the eosinophils is really helpful. They can be a varying amount. Some cases have like lymphoid aggregates with germinal centers, can look almost like lymph node cellularity of lymphocytes. And then sometimes the eosinophils are numerous like here. Sometimes they are very rare and sparse. So it varies from case to case. Some cases occur in the skin. It can have a polypoid arrangement with a cholerate that looks kind of like a PG, um, lobular capillary hemangioma at first glance. Other cases are going to be deeper down, like a classic site is on the temple or near there, often arising out of the wall of a damaged uh, vessel, particularly the temporal artery, sometimes coming up after trauma. Um, and so you can have one or multiple uh, nodules often in close proximity to each other. You can see them growing out of the wall of a damaged artery if you get a deep enough biopsy, and in some cases at least, and even into the lumen of the vessel, which is totally not worrisome. These are benign, but they can be problematic because they do have a tendency to recur. And I've, I've had multiple times where I've seen cases where the patient has had to have a couple surgeries because it kept coming back. I've had people contact me. Uh, surgeons from other parts of the world asking because they saw one of my videos on YouTube and they're like, do you have any ideas for treatment of this? Because we have a problem with a patient with recurrence. And so there've been multiple therapies tried. And if you're one of those people watching this video, no, I don't know other than what I've seen in the literature. I think people have tried lasers and uh, various, you know, uh, antihypertensive agents and stuff like that. And I'm not an expert on those things. But the problem is anytime there's multiple therapies, it's because none of them are particularly good at working all the time, right? So it is benign, but it can be locally problematic for patients, <clears throat> particularly if it's on the, the forehead or, or I've seen them in the ear canal a couple of times. And this can be more of an issue for people. And um, some of them uh, are positive for FOS or FOS-B, um, uh, which you can do immunohistochemistry for. 
or molecular testing for. And so that's, a, uh, I think, about 50% or so are positive for one of those markers. So that's a newer marker that's come out in recent years to help us to, to identify these. Um, and I don't have much personal experience with that yet.